Kashmir to North Rift farmers who are worried about the storage. And the genesis of this story, or the basis of it, is that uh, we have a situation in the country that uh, I, I think around May or April this year, there was a report that was tabled before Parliament by the CS for Agriculture, Mongi Kunjuri, saying that um, uh, the, the stores of NCPB were full because they had already acquired 3.6 million bags of maize at a cost of 11.5 billion shillings. And he was asked a question by the members of the Agriculture Committee National Assembly whether there was a possibility of reopening the stores. And he said no until uh, any, anything changes. Now, the stocks are still intact. The harvest is coming in. Farmers have not had to take this maize. Yet, we hear of a president who is saying, pay farmers their dues. We actually saw that uh, on uh, Mashujade. This is money for the previous season. What next for this industry and especially for these farmers who have stock in their hands and they don't know where to sell it? The unfortunate thing with this entire scenario is that personal gain has made us um, have short-sightedness as to what we need as a nation. Mm. Before I deal with the maize, let me give you another industry that suffered a similar fate. For the longest time, the coffee farmers were not getting their due for their labor. Mm -hmm. And we got to a place where people started uprooting their coffee plantations. Mm -hmm. We've got to a place where some of the most arable land in Kenya, in Kiambu, is now real estate. Mm -hmm. Why? Because if I sell you my one-acre plot in Kiambu right now, I make myself a cool, let's say, ballpark figure because I don't know the current rates. Maybe I get myself my 70 million. If I plant coffee for 50 years, mm -hmm. I'm not going to make that 70 million. So you get to a place where somebody decides, you know what? Why am I breaking my back doing this? Let me just give it up. What that did internationally, Kenyan coffee, the status we held for a long time of, of um, we had some of the finest coffee in the world. We've gone down such that our quality is now such that it's not as desirable as, for example, mm -hmm. what you see with Ethiopia. Mm -hmm. They've gone and they've perfected. And now even Uganda has a very robust coffee industry. Mm -hmm. Now let me bring it back to maize. We had rumors last year of not rumors, there was an infestation of the army, the fall army worm, what is it called, the army worm, that was spoiling the harvest. Right. And that became the excuse to say, oh, we're going to run out of maize. Mm -hmm. So let's do what, let's import maize. We have seen the debacle with the NCPB. We've got into a place where those farmers who did not manage to offload their, their maize last season, mm -hmm. their granaries are still full. Forget about the NCPB granaries. Your granary in your shamba is already full. Mm -hmm. You have another harvest over there. They're telling you they're not going to buy. We've gotten to a place where a cock of a Christmas is going to cost more than a bag of maize. It gets to a place where if you are right thinking individually, you'll say, why am I killing myself for this? Mm -hmm. So what do you do? You change somebody, something else or you stop doing it all together. Give it another five years. Right. Now we'll have a real crisis on our hands mm -hmm. without producing sufficient maize. Mm -hmm. I like what the president is saying but I wish you would follow through with action. I'm not satisfied with saying if you do this again. No. If people have done something wrong, mm -hmm. it's time for heads to roll. Let Kenyans see that the government is really intent, not just intent, but serious about handling this so they don't lose hope in doing something because we've killed the cotton industry. Mm -hmm. Dairy is on, it's always teetering on the brink. Our beef is not where it's supposed to be. There's so many industries that right. are dying mm -hmm. because of bad policy management and handling. And in my opinion, the CS should take responsibility. Well, talking about the cabinet design. secretary, mm. this is the second time in mm. about 15, 16 days. Because mm. uh, on October 4th, when uh, the president was at the uh, Nairobi International Trade Fair, yeah. or ESK <coughs> show, as uh, we know it, yeah, uh, he told him that you have really to ensure that this money that has been released is paid to the farmers. And if you get it wrong, then you'll be in for it. Mm. Again, at the Mashujade celebration in Bukungu, he uh, said a similar thing, that Mwangi um, Kinjuri wakatu mchezo umekwisha. Now you have uh, to sort this out or you find yourself part of uh, the, the, the problem. Do you think he is able, the cabinet secretary is able to manage the situation with Mays and actually the ministry at large? Every appointee must understand the body language of the appointing authority. That's <clears> right. They must be able to learn what is close to their hearts. I would recommend to... Mwangi Kyunjuri, a wonderful book by two former UK ministers called How to Be a Minister. Mm -hmm. You must be in tune with the appointing authority's vision. Now, the reason Mwangi Kyunjuri is going to take a lot of heat mm -hmm. is that one 
you know, the big four is very close to the heart of the president. Mm -hmm. The big four has food security as one of the things. Mm -hmm. It's not only about being a food secure country. It's the opportunities of economic growth that that, that food, food security, security offers the country. Mm -hmm. The president knows that when we get our farmers to do their farming right, they bring their maize to the NCPB silos. They will be paid for it. The impact of that on the economy is that our farmers and the areas from which they come will be economically improved. If you then carry maize from Tanzania, I mean Uganda, mm -hmm. when in fact there are farmers who have their maize lying at home and rotting and have to then sell it at throwaway prices, then what you have done is to impoverish these people, to make them see no sense in doing this farming again. Mm -hmm. And the end result is that we are not a food secure country. Mm -hmm. Now, the moment Mwangi Kyunjuri has not read the mood of the boss. He puts himself on the line of fire. Of course, Sam, I have been in government a bit and know that there is so much that goes on. A lot of cartels operate some of these ministries. But when you have the goodwill of the president, mm -hmm. you must be able to face the cartels and tell them, take a walk to hell and write back if you choose. Mm -hmm. Because it is what Matiangi did in education. He knew mm -hmm. that he had the backing of the president to deliver a cheat-free examination. Mm -hmm. And with Magoa at hand, they ensured they fixed it. People failed, schools got burnt as a result, because students, we have a society that has decided to buy exams for their children, but it didn't matter. Eventually, it has been known now, whether you ban the school or not, the exams are going to come and mm -hmm. the leakages will not be there. Mm -hmm. So if Mwangi Kyunjuri had taken advantage of that, he would not be in the line of fire as he is. Mm -hmm. And so all I urge him is reread the mood of the boss, right. realign yourself with his vision. Sam Atandi, you have the opportunity for the last uh, voice on this. And uh, mm. the question for you is, uh, we have seen the cabinet secretary giving different briefs before mm. parliament, saying mm. that this is the list of farmers that uh, supplied this uh, large am amount of uh, maize, and this is the price that they should have been paid. We have seen the investigative agencies, this year and the DPP, taking people before court, including the Crop Development Principal Secretary, Richard Lesiampe. That case is still ongoing. What option does it leave Mwangi Kyunjuri now, knowing that all those processes are taking place, what can he do mm. so that uh, he's out of all this mess? Uh, I think what's happening to our farmers is a shame. And uh, as a country, it is even uh, illegal that we are talking about uh, food sufficiency, you know, as one of the pillars of Jubilee government. What needs to, what needs to happen now is if Mwangi Kyunjuri uh, has not stepped aside, I think the president needs to wield a, a bigger stick right now. So Mwangi Kyunjuri has and no, has, no, there's nothing well, else he can do? The, 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 with all these messages, I think there's no other option. He's clearly incompetent. And wow. I think the, the, the president needs to wield <laughs> the stick. And this is something that president needs to do now, to reorganize the whole government. Because we have many cabinet secretaries who are very incompetent. Mm -hmm. One of them is this one of sports. This one who does not know what the role of a cabinet secretary wow. is all about. <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> so, I think that, uh, I think the, 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 the president needs to fire a chaser for sports because the role of a CS is policy formulation and I cannot relate policy and that CS so I think there are so many mm -hmm. things that needs to be done this uh, Kyunjuri needs to exit and many others the president needs to do it once and for all so that he can bring competence and order in government because look at the, uh, this minister he's coming to parliament with uh, fake reports that are cannot be uh, cannot be implemented have not been implemented he's like he doesn't know what he's doing and agriculture is sensitive, and our farmers in the Rift Valley mm -hmm. are actually, uh, this is actually the bedrock of, our, of, of this economy wow. in terms of food, food sufficiency. So we really need to uh, protect these farmers. Let us, let us reward them for what they are doing for our economy, <coughs> and somebody must take, must take that responsibility. Well, quite an appraisal there from Sam Atande. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, anyway, thank you so much for coming to the panel to talk about... Can I say something for the last as I, as I wind up? <laughs> really? Can we? Yes, yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> on, Can on, we? Uh, <laughs> On, on uh, Mashuja Day, I, I was lucky to have been invited by the head of state to participate, uh, to, to attend the event, and we went there with many of our politicians. And there's something that I observe, which I must uh, tell Kenyans, you know, mm -hmm. 
you know, even as we campaign, you know, there's this notion that is out there that, you know, as politicians, we want to show opulence, we want to uh, show that we have resources, that political competition has been reduced to, you know, showing how wealthy you are, you know. Mm -hmm. And we have seen a lot of our politicians doing very big harambes, contributing millions of shillings and ETC. And I was very happy that uh, when we went to the stadium and uh, we, uh, especially in Western Province, where you know, Deputy President has been running all over the place with all lots of money doing projects and ambas. I did not even see people excited when he was invited to talk. Summertime. So I, I, I really, really must, Kenyans are really maturing up. We actually thought that there was happy. a point in oh, that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very, very happy that yeah, Kenyans, yeah, Kenyans are now oh. saying oh. that it's not about money that, so that takes it in the Let me just say this, Sam. The country, the citizens, just as the Julius leaders in point. sports of responsibility as cabinet secretaries, have an obligation mm -hmm. to themselves first mm -hmm. to try and support this big four agenda. Mm -hmm. They have an obligation to raise voices of concern whenever the health sectors that we really hope are improved doesn't work as it should or mm -hmm. the universal health cover that we want or that the, the farmers are going through the things they're going through mm -hmm. of course i appreciate the president for deciding to pay all the arrears of the as you know sugarcane farmers mm -hmm. it, was a, it was a big thing mm -hmm. and however these leaders put in places mm -hmm. which are close to the heart of the boss Mm -hmm. must read the 48 laws of power. Law number 19, don't offend the wrong person. Law number 35, master the art of timing. If you don't, you are home in the next few weeks. And because the gentlemen have had their chance at a oh last... Oh God, Joey, <laughs> you have 20 seconds. I have my 20 seconds. We as Kenyans also need to understand that as the president said, our elected leaders are our servants. Let us stop aggrandizing and giving people stature that really does not okay. belong. Because yes. what that does is we let them get away with rape, murder, and manslaughter, literally now. We need to come to a place, as Kenyans, we should demand more of our leaders. And when they don't deliver, we should show them the door. Good. All right, thank you so much. Some misled us to.